In the cool running streams of the Texas Hill Country, where the water is clear and virtually undisturbed, there is a threat looming over one of the most important aquatic species that lives here. That species is the state fish of Texas, the Guadalupe bass. Mike, are you doing any good? You're good at tying on flies. <laughs> Dr. Guy Harrison and his friend, Mike Andrews, are fly fishing in the North Fork of the Guadalupe River. They're looking for one of the river's original species. I got him. Fish on. He's a Guadalupe bass. He might be a hybrid, but he's Guadalupe. He's a nice fish. He's about 14, 15 inches. And I didn't know that I had him hardly until I really felt him because he didn't make much of a splash. He just kind of sucked it under. Want some water through your gills here so you can go. He put up a nice fight. Put up a nice fight. The Guadalupe bass is a good sports fish. It puts up a fine fight. It's a pretty fish. It doesn't get real big. It probably a little around three pounds is, would be the largest, but you get some nice sized ones and they're native to our state. The biggest problem is that most of the Guadalupe bass that you catch are really hybrids. As you know, it's a state fish. So we really ought to do something about that. A Texas native, the Guadalupe bass has been in danger of becoming extinct. That's because the popular smallmouth bass that also inhabits the same streams has been crossbreeding with the native Guadalupe. The smallmouth bass were brought in to Texas by Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, in the mid 70s to provide an additional sport fish for anglers. Uh, having no idea that they might hybridize with our native uh, hill country Guadalupe bass. With support from the Upper Guadalupe River Authority and local fishing clubs, it's here at the heart of the Hills Fisheries Science Center that Dr. Gary Garrett and Science Center technicians are trying to save the Guadalupe bass. The problems with the hybridization of Guadalupe bass were actually discovered back in the late 70s. Late 80s, I got involved in it and we did a range-wide survey to uh, just determine the extent of the problem and we found to our dismay that it was quite extensive. We were fairly certain if we didn't do anything, we would lose the fish entirely. This species would go extinct. Extinction was not an option to Dr. Garrett, so he helped devise a stocking program that would potentially bring back the Guadalupe. We began work to raise thousands and thousands of pure Guadalupe bass, put them back into the system, and simply overwhelm the hybrids. Let's go again, okay? Fisheries technicians Shane Pavlicek and Cray Arms are fishing for Guadalupe bass at several spots along nearby Johnson Creek. They are collecting data on the fish, a census of sorts, to find out who's who among the bass community. Every fall, we send the guys out to collect Guadalupe bass. Point of that is twofold. One is to just analyze the population to see how we're doing and what percentage of hybrids are out there. But then we also keep some of the pure large adults and hold them as our brood fish. That's what we're looking for. That'll make a brooder right there. Get him back to the hatchery. And hopefully get a bunch of fingerlings from that one. Catching the right fish can be a challenge. I got me a little one. Oh, I have another green sunfish. Another stinking sunfish. Mm. Another green sunfish. These things are getting on my nerves. <laughs> but persistence usually pays off. There we go. Good old boy, Loopy Bass. Right there at my thumb is a brown toothpick, and that's one of the ways of identifying a Guadalupe bass. 
After the fish are caught, they're brought back to their research center. There we note location they were caught in, how many from each location, and each fish is injected with an internal tag. 260. So each of these fish are individually identified, and we take thin clips off of the fish for analysis. In the very early days, we actually had to look at the fish and measure things like numbers of scales and fin rays and pretty much make our best guesses whether it was pure or a hybrid. But today we use the latest technology, and that's DNA analysis. And we can tell not only if it's pure or not, we can tell if it was a back-crossed hybrid. We can tell a lot about its genetic history. The other nice thing about this technology is we don't have to kill the fish to find out what's going on with them. We can literally just cut a little bit of their fin. The fish are just fine. Once the DNA testing is completed, the pure Guadalupe bass are separated from the hybrids back at the Science Center. They'll be held through the winter months until spring. That's when mating pairs will be matched and moved to the ponds for spawning. It's a coordinated effort with Mother Nature, designed to produce as many fish as possible. Large, one large, large, another large, one small. One small. And the critical stage is actually getting the fish out into the ponds and getting a successful spawn. We've got to time it just right. If we put the fish out too early and we get a late norther, we can lose everything. So it's a real balancing and timing act to get it just right. Fisheries technician Bobby Winnicky grew up near the Science Center. He's been familiar with the state fish practically all his life. Whenever I was a kid growing up, I used to fish at Johnson Creek and we used to catch a certain little bass, and we always called it a river bass. But then I found out that they had the real name of a Guadalupe bass. Part of Bobby's job is to manage the productivity of the ponds. But the Guadalupe thrive in fast water, and getting them to spawn in open ponds wasn't easy until the creation of the Guadalupe bass condo. It seems like they want to hang around uh, rock ledges under rocks and that's where we pick up most of our fish. We more or less decided to come up with a condo that you set in a pond that they would feel more secure. I think it's probably a 90, 95% difference in just uh, letting them go in a pond without any cover. When the male has successfully attracted a female to the bass condo, she could lay up to 9,000 eggs, which will only take a few days to hatch. The male will remain at the nest to protect the young from would-be predators. After three months, the ponds are drained. The broodfish are saved for future restocking efforts, but the fingerlings will be moved to their new home in Johnson Creek. We don't want to stock them at too small of a size uh, because they'll just basically we'll be just putting fish food out in the river. We want them to be large enough to fend for themselves and have a fairly good chance of survival. Once we get to the creek, what we do is find good locations, good habitat, good hiding places, and the kind of places that Guadalupe bass are designed to hide in. They know, they recognize, this is where I belong, and they'll move right into their habitat. We're putting them in slowly so that they uh, can adjust to this new environment. We're working with the state fish of Texas here. So that's, you know, it's kind of a uh, one-of-a-kind deal. The plan for the program is to stock intensively for five years. What I want to do is put a quarter of a million fish in the Guadalupe River and its tributaries every year. And in doing that, I feel pretty confident we're going to push that hybridization percentage down to around zero. And if we do that, we probably can say we've saved the Guadalupe bass. The efforts by Heart of the Hills Fishery Science Center are making a difference. And if Dr. Garrett has a say in the matter, the Guadalupe bass will long endure as the official state fish of Texas.